Now we've got one of our shorter webcasts today with live coverage ending just after first stage landing and second stage engine cutoff. Payload deploy is scheduled to occur about T plus one hour after liftoff. And we will confirm deployments of our Starlink satellites via SpaceX's social channels. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. If for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity on Saturday, April 30th at 5.05 p.m. Eastern time. Now the vehicle that you see on your screen is our Falcon 9 rocket and the Starlink satellites are housed at the very top of the rocket in a structure known as the fairing. And there you can see the fairing on your screen. The job of the fairing is to protect the Starlink satellites until we reach the vacuum of space. At that point, we will jettison the fairing halves and attempt to retrieve them once they return back down to Earth. The fairing halves protecting our Starlink satellites today are flying for the second time. And if you're familiar with SpaceX, Engine you know that... If you're familiar with SpaceX, you know that reusability is one of our top priorities as it is key to reducing the cost of space access for all of us. Falcon 9 is the only orbital class rocket in the world capable of reuse, which means that it's the only rocket that can boost its payload to orbit and then come back down to Earth to be flown again. Now, the part of the rocket that's responsible for powering these repeat trips to space is called the first stage, and it's the bottom portion of the vehicle that you see on your screen. The dark soot that you might be able to see around the base of the vehicle are remnants from its previous launches. This particular booster has supported five previous missions. GPS-3 space... Stage one, RP-1 load is complete. GPS-3 space vehicle four and five, Inspiration-4, a Starlink mission, and most recently, AX-1 or Axiom-1, which just launched three weeks ago. In fact, the booster that you see on your screen had the fastest turnaround time to date. The AX-1 mission launched on April 8th, so it only took the teams nine days to refurbish, and today marks 21 days to get it back to the launch pad to support today's mission. That's a great milestone for our teams as it brings us one step closer to providing fast and reliable access to space for all. Now, the number nine in Falcon 9 references the nine engines on the first stage. There's actually 10 engines on the vehicle overall. The 10th engine powers the second stage, which is the portion of the rocket that you see on your screen at, uh, at the very top of the rocket below the fairing. Now, while the first stage powers us out of Earth's atmosphere and into space, the second stage takes the satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit. After the first and second stages separate, the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine and carry our satellites to low Earth orbit. Though very similar to the Merlin 1D engines on the first stage, the Merlin vacuum engine has a larger nozzle that allows the second stage to perform better in the... tanks are pressing for strong back retract. ...allows the uh, MVAC engine to perform better in the vacuum of space. Now, following separation of the second stage, we will be attempting to recover the first stage for a sixth time on our drone ship. Just read the instructions, and you can see that there live on your Trying screen. Lower, uh, started. And if successful, it will mark the 117th recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage. Now, we are coming up upon the TE retraction, and to do so, the clamp arms need to open. And you can see on your screen, those clamp arms just below the fairing are opening up. Once they're fully open, the transport erector will start to move slightly away from the vehicle and clear its way for liftoff. If you've been following along, you know that we've had a pretty busy week here at SpaceX. On Sunday, the first ever private astronaut mission to the International Space Station undocked from the floating laboratory and safely splashed down the following day in the Atlantic Ocean. After 17 days in space, here you can see the Axiom astronauts taking their first breaths of fresh air in more than two weeks. Here you can see Commander Michael Lopez Alegria, pilot Larry Connor, and mission specialists Mark Pathy and Aton Stibba. Then early Wednesday morning, SpaceX launched Crew-4 carrying NASA astronauts Chell Lindgren, Bob Hines, Jessica Watkins, and ESA astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti to the International Space Station. It took the crew about 16 hours after liftoff to reach their destination. Stage one, locks load is complete. And along the way, they took a moment to have some fun and give us a little tour around the Dragon spacecraft. 
And we're not done yet. The Crew 4's arrival to station, with Crew 4's arrival to station, Crew 3 is now preparing to return back to Earth after their long duration stay aboard the International Space Station. So stay tuned for more on that. And this has also been a great week for anyone who's ever had a bad Wi-Fi experience on a plane as Starlink is now coming to air travel. JSX, a regional air carrier in the continental United States, and Hawaiian Airlines have both selected Starlink as their in-flight internet provider. And both airlines will make Starlink service available to every passenger without complicated login or payment screens so that when customers get on the plane, the internet just works. So that's very exciting. But with just a couple minutes left to go, Falcon 9 is moving into the final stages of the countdown. We already heard locks load complete on the first stage. We are awaiting completion of locks load on the second stage here. Stage two, locks load is complete. Great news, that's that call out. What that means is now prop load is complete on Falcon 9 and ready for T0 today. We'll start to vent yeah, out. Yeah, close out. Uh, start to vent out the liquid oxygen lines on the transporter erector so you can see those white clouds there on your screen. And then at the T minus one minute mark, the Falcon 9 flight computers will take over the launch countdown. And we should hear that call out here shortly. And great weather over there at the Cape. This is great, a great day for. And great news. Great day for a launch. Falcon 9 is now in startup. We are now just waiting for the final go from the launch director. Falcon 9, Starlink 416, LD is go for launch. And great news. We are go for launch. 30 seconds. Now with all systems go, let's watch as Falcon 9 takes our 53 Starlink satellites into orbit. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites. Now, although at liftoff, gravity is pulling the vehicle straight down, as we ascend, we tilt the engines. Power telemetry nominal. And tilting those engines is called gimbling. That turns the rocket horizontally, and you can kind of see that there on your screen. So we are still going up, but we're also heading horizontally away from I'm the watch. launch pad. And that is what we call a gravity turn. And we are coming up on max Q here in a few seconds. Max Q. And there's that call out that we've just passed through max Q. Now that's the largest structural load that the vehicle sees on ascent and we have passed through it. So next up will be a series of events. First will be Miko, or main engine cutoff, and that's where all nine of the Merlin engines will shut down. And that slows the vehicle down in preparation for the second milestone, which Start is- Start of MVAC engine chill. The second uh, milestone will be stage separation. That's where the first and second stage separate from each other. First stage will start to make its way back to Earth, and the second stage will continue on its journey. With vehicle is following a nominal trajectory with SES-1, or second stage engine startup one, 
And that's where the single Merlin vacuum engine will light up and propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to orbit. We've got some awesome views watching Falcon 9 on ascent. We're just about 15 seconds away from those three events, Miko stage separation and SES-1. Just about 10 seconds or so after SES-1, we should also see the fairing halves jettison from the second stage. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. <laughs> Bearing separation confirmed. And some incredible views there. We just had Nico's stage separation. You can see those fairing halves on your right hand screen Both falling back to Earth. Trajectories. And got some nominal call outs. The MVAC engine lit up on the second stage. The first stage grid fins have deployed. So on your left hand screen, you're looking at a view from the first stage. On your right hand screen, you're looking at a view of the MVAC engine on the second stage. While that second stage is doing its job, that first stage is coming back home to Earth. And it'll execute two burns to get back home. First is the entry burn, and that's where three of the nine M1D engines reignite, and that helps to slow the stage down as it's entering back into the denser part of the Earth's atmosphere. Then the atmosphere actually helps to scrub a lot of the velocity of the vehicle until the second and final burn, which is the landing burn. That's a single engine burn that brings the, the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to touch down on the drone ship. A signal, Bermuda. And again, today, we will be attempting to land on just read the instructions. And each one of these M1D engines is about 190,000 pounds of thrust. So we do only use one engine for that final landing burn to touch down on our drone ship. And the drone ship, just for size, is about equivalent to... Uh, Both vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Oh, to the size of a football field, so it's pretty large. We're just a couple minutes away from the entry burn starting up on the first stage. First stage also has four landing legs made of carbon fiber, aluminum, honeycomb. And they're placed symmetrically uh, around the Falcon 9 vehicle instead of the base of the vehicle. They just deploy just right before the vehicle touches down. Got some great views here. Again, on your left-hand screen is a view looking aft, uh, now looking forward, <laughs> of the first stage. And on your right-hand screen, a view of the second stage. Again, looking at the MVAC engine, but we got a great view of the Earth in the background of both of these views. Again, today we are carrying our Starlink satellites to their drop-off orbit. And on your left-hand screen, you might see some uh, white puffs there. there go. Uh, those are nitrogen gas puffs. Um, those help with attitude control, as well as the grid fins helping to guide the vehicle back to the landing zone. Everything's still looking nominal. Stage two on a nominal trajectory. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS is saved. And on your left hand screen, you can see those engines reigniting. This burn will last about 20 seconds long. This is the entry burn for the first stage. Stage one entry burn shut down. And as you saw, those engines shut down. That concludes the entry burn. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. And just the callouts that we want to hear, everything is still looking nominal for both vehicles. And we are just about a minute away from the landing burn beginning on the first stage. 
Again, as I mentioned, the atmosphere helps to scrub a lot of the velocity as first stage makes its way back to the landing zone after the entry burn has concluded. And we've got a great view here of the second stage. And I mentioned that soot earlier on the first stage. Um, as you saw the, the vehicle, the first stage vehicle actually enters back into the Earth's atmosphere with the engines first. So it is flying through its own plume. Uh, and the fuel for Falcon 9 is a kerosene, which is carbon based. And that's what uh, creates that, that soot onto the vehicle. We are coming up on the landing burn here for stage first stage. One landing burn. Great timing, landing burn has begun. Again, this will also last about 20 seconds and we should see the landing legs deploy just before touchdown and some great views here. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage two is in terminal guidance. Incredible views. Falcon 9 has landed on our drone ship just through the instructions. What an incredible landing. This marks the 117th recovery of a first stage booster. And we are coming up on Seco, which is second stage engine cutoff one in a few seconds second here. Engine cut off. parking orbit and great call outs we just had seco one that's second stage engine cutoff one with a confirmation of good orbit so with that successful confirmation of second stage engine cutoff and a good orbit we will be ending our webcast for today's launch now as mentioned previously we will be confirming payload deploy via our social channels so keep an eye out for that thank you to the federal aviation administration for supporting I our signal supporting our mission today and of course thank you to all of our viewers and all of our starlink customers using our service at this time keep an eye out on our social channels for the latest spacex news and we'll see you next time